All right, welcome back for part three. Remember, these questions are all worth four points. Now, once again, we have another construction here. All right, it says, using a compass and a straight edge, construct and label triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, the image of triangle ABC after a dilation with a scale factor of two centered at point B. So we're centered at point B and we're dilating AC. Now, it's kind of hard to do this without the construction tools because remember, if it says the word construct, you should be using a protractor and a compass but I'll show you what it generally looks like. First thing you're gonna do is just draw a line like this out using your ruler, all right? Because that's the center of dilation, it goes out like this. So you wanna draw two lines. Now, using your compass, you would measure the length of AB, all right? So it should see mark there. And once you do that, you just carry it over and just do it again over here. Now watch the whole video on this one if you wanna see how to do that, all right? And I'll show you exactly how to mark it. All right, and then you just connect those two points but there's a video on the constructions. Now, that's two points of this question. The second two points should be a piece of case, cake. It says, describe the relationship between the lengths of AC and A prime, C prime, okay? So this is AC and this is A prime, C prime. Now, the dilation has a scale factor of two. So the relationship is this. We know that A prime, C prime is twice the length of AC. And that's all you had to write to get an extra two points on this. Now, a lot of people I saw write this, the slopes are the same or the lines are gonna be parallel. But the question here says very specific, specifically, what's the relationship between the lengths? And it's not that it got bigger, it got twice as long because it tells you the scale factor is two. All right, so that's all you had to do to get the second point. And if you still wanna do dilations, remember the videos on the website on how to do those. All right, this is a tricky question. Let A prime, B prime, C prime be the image of ABC after a rotation around point A. Determine and state the location of B prime if the location of point C prime is eight, negative three. Explain your answer. So it tells us that C prime is at eight, negative three, which is right here. So we know this triangle rotated up like this. Now, some of you who went to Regents Prep just know this. You can take another piece of paper and all you do is actually trace ABC and actually you can rotate this triangle using a piece of paper until C matches onto C prime. And if you do it that way, when you actually rotate the paper, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, ask someone to do it, you'd find out that B prime ends up right over here. All right. Other way to do it, you can kind of just visualize it. You can see it that way. All right. So the first thing we know is that the point when you rotate it, and I don't have a great way of explaining this, would just be B prime is 0.71. Okay? Now, the explanation's on you. You could just say you, wrote, you took a piece of paper and you rotated it that way. Now, the second part of this question is very interesting. I'm going to zoom out a little for this. Is triangle DEF congruent to triangle A, B, A prime, B prime, C prime? Explain your answer. So this is triangle DEF over here, and it's asking us, is it congruent to this triangle over here, A prime, B prime, C prime? And this is what you have to write. You have to find out a way to get these to map onto each other. That's how you're gonna determine if they're congruent. So the answer here would be something like this. Yes, they are congruent. And check this out. How can I get these to map onto each other? Well, if you reflect over the line, x equals negative one, they map perfectly onto each other, okay? Because they're both, look, one, two, three, one, two, three. And all the points are equidistant from that line. So they would map onto each other. So you could say, yes, they are congruent because a reflection over x equals negative one maps triangle a prime, b prime, c prime onto triangle def. But I'm not done there. Remember, it's asked me why it's congruent. So the next thing I'm gonna have to say is a reflection is a rigid motion, and you know what's coming next, and rigid motions preserve side lengths and angle measures. And that's all you'd have to do to answer that question. Just like that, okay? You just state the transformation that maps them onto each other and just mention that it's a rigid motion and we know rigid motions 
preserve angles inside, so they must be congruent. All right, and now for our last question over here, we want to find, to the nearest tenth degree, this angle right over here. All right, and so what you're going to do is this. Here's the strategy. Uh, check it out. So if we're trying to find this small angle, what we're going to do is this. We have to find the big angle first of this bigger triangle. So here's our big triangle. We're going to find this angle using trigonometry. And then we're going to subtract it, and we're going to find the angle, sorry, of this smaller triangle right over here. So here's our smaller triangle. So here are our two triangles. And then we're going to find this angle right here. And then we're going to subtract them to get the angle that we want. And just to show you what that means, let's say I found out, and this is not the actual angles, that this whole angle over here is 100 degrees. All right? And then let's say I find out this small triangle, this small angle right here, is 20 degrees. So to find out this missing part, if the whole thing's 100 and this little part's 20, then I know that the missing angle is going to be 80, because 80 plus 20 is 100. So that's our general strategy here. So we're going to find the angles of those two triangles. So let's just draw our two triangles here. Remember, draw two triangles. Draw those triangles. Separate them out. We got big triangle, and we got smaller triangle. Now, big triangle has these side lengths. It has this side and this side. So the bottom is 75, and the big part right here is 72. You've got to add them together. And we've got to find this angle right here. So that's our x. And our smaller triangle, we have our side of 12, and this is, once again, 75. And that's where we put our x this time. Now, since this is trig, we're going to write out Sokotoa. All right? And label our sides. This is opposite, and this is going to be adjacent. This is opposite, and this is going to be adjacent. So to find our missing angles, it's quite simple. We're just going to do inverse trig. So we say the tan of x is equal to 72 over 75. And let's set up our other equation. The tan of x is equal to uh, 12 over 75. All right. Now, when you're looking for an angle in trig, remember, you just use the inverse functions. So let's do that. The tan negative 1, tan negative 1 on both sides cancels out. We bring down our x. x is equal to tan negative 1 of 72 over 75. This is going to find our bigger angle. And over here, we have tan negative 1. I'm just skipping steps now. Oh, what am I doing? Hold on. I'm skipping too many steps. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We're going to do tan negative 1 on both sides. Tan negative 1 cancels. x equals tan negative 1, 12 over 75. Okay, let's get those angles. Let's see what our first angle is over here. So our first angle is, let's put that into a calculator. Uh, I got my trusty calc over here. Uh, 10, negative 1, 72 divided by 75. And we get 43.83. 43.83. There's more numbers. I'm just, uh, you should put them all down. I'm just being a little bit lazy right now. Now the next one is 10, negative 1. 12 over 75, and you get 9.09. .09. All we have to do now is subtract these two numbers, because remember, the big angle is 43.83. The smaller angle right here, we found out, is 9.09. .09. We subtract them to figure out what this part of the angle is right over here. Okay, so when we subtract those from each other, we get... 34, hold on, we have 43.83 minus 9.09, .09, and we get 40, why am I saying 40? 34.739. All right, now we're going to round this to the nearest tenth of a degree, and if we round that to the nearest tenth of a degree, we get x, our missing theta, is equal to 34.7 degrees. Remember, degrees is important. Whew, hell of a question, right? Just had to subtract those two angles. All right, guys, that's it for the part threes. Come back for the part fours.